Hi everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome to The French Seams. Thanks very much for joining me again for another video. This is all about my autumn plans. So I just love autumn. I love the colours, I love the falling leaves. Um, it's my little boy's birthday coming up, it's Halloween, it's also our wedding anniversary not too far away. So I just love this time of year and of course the build up towards Christmas. So I'm really, really excited about my autumn plans and I can't wait to share them with you. So as always, thank you so much to everybody who's watched any of my previous videos, anybody who's left a thumbs up, anybody who's left a comment, anybody who's subscribed. Thank you very, very much. If you're new to my channel, you're very, very welcome and I hope you do stick around. And if you're a regular viewer or subscriber, then welcome back. So what am I wearing today? So the weather has taken a turn. It's now becoming a little bit more autumnal, which is wonderful. We've had the most horrible weather um, the past few weeks. Storm Agnes, I'm looking at you. But hopefully that has passed now and we're going to get some lovely, lovely crisp autumn weather. So I thought it'd be appropriate today to wear my little half zip sweatshirt. So I made this the very start of this year. I actually won this pattern in the A Gift November challenge, which I love, which I'm super excited is being run again this November. Thank you, Alison and Adam. It's the half zip sweatshirt from Wardrobe by Me. And it's in this beautiful pre-quilted uh, fabric from uh, Beyond the Pink Door that I got, I think in January. And it's got a little half zip and then it's got the cuffs and then the hem band as well. And I just really, really like it. And I've also got it with a um, Emmy t-shirt from Jennifer Lauren Handmade underneath as well. So I just love it because you can zip it up, you can zip it down. It's really, really versatile. I love wearing it. So that's what I'm wearing today. So without further ado, I will crack on. I've got my trusty notebook. I've got my uh, line drawings to discuss things with you. And then I've also got a tiny bit of autumn crochet to show you at the end. So if you're not interested, I'll put the, um, the chapters as always down below so you can skip ahead. But if you would like to see some autumnal crochet, then stay to the very, very end. So uh, as always, I will link all these in the description box below. I only have fabric for two of these plans, so I'm going to be on the lookout for fabric for the others. I do have things in mind. I've spotted things, but I'm going to be buying them along the way. So if you would like to keep up with my progress instead of waiting until my autumn makes video, then I will be doing Friday sews um, most Fridays and I will catch you up with all my, um, my progress through that. So without further ado, here we go. So the first thing I would like to get sewn up, and I think I would, um, is the Heyday Dungarees by um, Waves and Wild. So I made these, was it last summer or the summer before? I think it was last summer. No, it was the summer before. Um, in this beautiful navy linen from Crafty Studio, and I absolutely loved wearing the Heydays. So the Heydays are just a standard dungaree pattern. Uh, you can do loops, you can do buttonholes. For all these, I'll pop up some stock, uh, some line drawings um, and you can roll up the cuffs. They've got pockets at the front, pockets at the back. They've got a bib pocket. I just loved wearing these. And I kind of have a hankering for an autumnal pair. So I'm thinking maybe corduroy. So maybe um, a black corduroy, a brown, maybe a kind of russety orangey color. I think would look really, really nice for the autumn. My only problem is what do I wear underneath? Because during the summer I just wore a t-shirt, that was fine. Do I wear a kind of shirt? Do I wear a t-shirt? Do I wear a jumper? Not quite sure. And also what shoes I wear. So I'd be very, very interested to hear what you guys have to think about that. So next up, um, I would like to make a cuddle cardigan. So this is a kind of new to me pattern company. They're called Mizuzu Patterns. Um, I think the lovely Sarah from uh, Incomplete Stitches, you know, I love her bags. I think she's done some uh, testing, some modeling for these. The patterns look really great. They're quite architectural and uh, nice lines in them. I think that's a really, really nice pattern company. So I'd encourage you to take a look. I'll link them below. But the cuddle cardigan is a cardigan with a difference. It's got a lovely V at the back and a lovely band. And then it's got these really interesting pockets at the side and I think that would be really really cute for autumn and um, I would like to make it a little bit cropped because I've been wearing an awful lot of dresses to work recently and I do have my Marlowe cardigans uh, but they're quite boxy so I think this is, is a slimmer fit so I really really like the look of this pattern and for this I was thinking I just like a looped back French terry so I've seen a few online just thinking about the colour probably err towards maybe a navy greeny colour to go with most of the things I have in my wardrobe so I think that would be a lovely pattern to get sewn up for autumn. Next is another new to me pattern company and I spotted this from um, the lovely Steph from Fabric Romance. I think she was wearing one of their jumpers before and I really liked the look of it. The pattern company is called Patty Do and I think they're a German company. Um, so I do German in school, I'll have to dust off that and see how I get on. Um, so this one is called the Lin and it's a beautiful sweatshirt. It's got a lovely high collar kind of crossover. You know how much I love that. I, I love that in the Waves and Wild um, hot coffee hoodie. I love that kind of neck 
neckline. It's got lovely long sleeves and it's got really interesting pockets. You can see in the line drawings here, the kind of stitch line of the pockets. I think it looks really cute and really, really cozy. So for this, I was thinking a brushed French terry. So I got a brushed French terry from Ecobee for my um, Love Notions Whistler sweatshirt and um, they're back in March and I loved how that fabric was. Really cozy, really comfortable, really fluffy and an awful lot of structure to it and I think that would lend itself really well to that beautiful high neckline. So I'm looking forward to get this one started. I think it'd be a really nice thing to have in the wardrobe for autumn and definitely for winter as well. The next one is by French Navy Patterns. So I have made one of their t-shirts before uh, last summer and I really, really liked it. And they've just released this uh, sweatshirt now called the Roscoe sweatshirt quite similar to this in that it's a half zip sweatshirt but I am really enjoying wearing this I think you can zip it up zip it down depending on how warm cool you are I think it's really really versatile and this one looks really nice it's got a really interesting front yoke that this one doesn't have and instead of the ribbing at the cuffs and waistband it does um, elastic channels which give it a really really nice finish so the recommended fabrics for this um, one of them is a polar fleece and I think that would look really really nice and I love wearing white during the winter I know it's an awful decision with two small children but I really love wearing it and I found a beautiful white polar fleece and I think this would look really nice. I just won't be able to wear it if I'm doing anything at all. It'll purely be just, just for sitting <laughs> but we'll see how this goes. I think it's a really really nice pattern. So next up is um, the Wildwood by Helen's Closet. So I mentioned this a few weeks ago in my Friday sews, I think, and then as luck would have it, I got a lovely email from Helen's Closet um, and they had 20% off. So I jumped at the opportunity. I thought it was just fate. So it's a beautiful pattern. It comes in a high hip, a low hip and a mid thigh. You can do it in a vest or a gilet, or you can do it in a long sleeve jacket. I think it looks really, really great. I would like to make the high hip gilet the vest version so it no sleeves it's got beautiful pockets and um, i think it could be made reversible which i think would be really nice and i found some beautiful fabric for this which i'm just about to buy and i would like maybe to the outer in a navy um, and i'm kind of deciding whether to do it in maybe a corduroy and then the inside um, i'm going to get some pre-quilted fabric i found some beautiful stuff so that's my plan for this i think it'd be a beautiful autumn uh, vest and also if it gets really really cold during the winter i can always wear it under a coat so layering layering so I think this is a beautiful pattern. I've made a number of Helen's Closet patterns before. The instructions are fabulous and I think this will be a really really nice opportunity. So I think I will have to get um, snaps for the front and um, more kind of heavy duty ones. I think I just have the jersey ones but they're quite lightweight the little plastic ones. I think for this you do need the, the more metallic ones so I'll be investigating that for sure. So next up is um, and this is the one that I do have fabric for and this is a coat. So I have made um, a kind of a coat before. I've made the Tasuti Patterns Berlin jacket. It's in a beautiful boiled wool. I've made the Heather blazer um, in a lovely tweed last autumn. I love it. But this is kind of a full on winter coat. And again, it's a Tasuti pattern and it's called the Soho coat. And for this, I'll show you the fabric. It weighs a ton. It needs to be pre-washed and it's quite fluffy. And it is the most gorgeous green teddy fabric that I got from Ecobee. I think it's just gorgeous. This is the colour. Hopefully you can see it. You know how much I love green. So as soon as I put this up, I thought, right, this is it. This is it. So it's a beautiful uh, drop sleeve pattern, uh, lovely full back lapels, um, and you can fold up the cuffs as well. And then it literally closes just with one button. So I think I could afford to get a really nice statement button for this. Um, I don't think it's lined. Perhaps maybe the sleeves are lined, I think. Um, and then I think there is a bit of bias binding as well. So watch this space. You know, I'm enjoying my bias binding journey. But I think this will make a really, really nice winter coat and is just so cozy and so gorgeous and just so like a teddy bear gorgeous so really looking forward to getting that uh, started. I think I might treat myself to a, a zero copy shop printing for that one. It looks like quite a lot of pages. Oh it's so fluffy. Apologies. Uh, the next one is going to be a repeat of one that I've just made. So if you watched my Friday sews two Fridays ago was it? last Friday? Can't quite remember. I'll link it below. Um, I made a Sienna dress and it's from Atelier Jupe. I wanted a kind of a, a wintry dress. So I made this up and I absolutely love it. The fabric wasn't everybody's taste. That's fine, but I did like it. It's got a beautiful high collar and it's um, it's quite long on me. I actually didn't have to trim the length at all. So it comes down about mid calf. I wore it with the nice boots and then it's got full length sleeves and I hacked it just to have an elastic cuff um, at the sleeves instead. And I absolutely love it. And for that, I have this gorgeous fabric 
which isn't necessarily autumnal colours, but I think it's just so pretty. I got this from Crafty Studio. It's a border print. So I'm hoping now that I've made the pattern once, I can do some very clat um, clatter, some very clever pattern placement to get the um, the border at the hem of the skirt and also at the wrists as well. But I think this would be beautiful. And it's just such a gorgeous colour. Just love this fabric. So and I think I'll get an awful lot of wear out of those winter dresses because you can wear a thermal vest under them. So next up on my plans is, um, so I really wanted to make some sort of, not trousers, but kind of jogger leggings. So during the winter, um, I'm going to be at the office most days, come home, I'd love to get changed into something nice when I get home from work. So I did have a pair of Avery leggings that I made years and years and years ago. Um, that was kind of pre-pregnancy, pre-pandemic, they don't necessarily fit anymore. So I'm wondering, I've I think two, three options for uh, for leggings or um, tracksuits that I'd like your advice on. So I was thinking the Avery leggings by Helen's Closet or the Plateau Joggers um, by Closet Core, which I have made before, which I really, really like, but also the Hudson Pants by True Bias. So I know everybody loves these and I don't have the pattern and I'm wondering, do I need to get that pattern? The merits of the Drew Bias Hudson's versus the Closet Core um, Plateau Joggers, I'm just not quite sure. And I think I would like to make them out of maybe a, a thicker cotton jersey or maybe a sweatshirting fabric to be super, super cozy. So let me know your thoughts on that. I did a little bit of research into fabric for the Avery leggings and I don't really want them to be sportswear fabric that I think the requirement for the, the pattern is like, like almost swimwear fabric because I think it requires a 70% stretch, but I don't want that kind of shiny fabric. I'd prefer some sort of matte, really comfy, cozy fabric. So if you do have any ideas, I would love to hear them. And then the last one is another new to me pattern company. And this purely just popped up on my Instagram one day on the search function. And I just clicked into the search and had a little look around and I saw this blouse and I thought it was really, really pretty. And the pattern company is called Maison Essentielle, Essentielle? Essential House, I believe. Um, and it's a French pattern company. And I was really taken by their blouse, their essential blouse pattern. And it comes in three variations. You can do a beautiful ruffle collar, you can do a kind of flatter ruffle collar, or you can do um, a kind of um, stand up Mandarin collar almost. And then I think it comes in versions with um, Sorry, there's fluff everywhere from the teddy fabric um, with a ruffle on the sleeve or just plain. And I just thought this was really, really pretty. You can also do a button placket. I think you can leave that off or you can put the button placket at the back, I believe. And I just thought this was a really, really pretty um, blouse pattern. I don't have many blouses um, or shirts and I'm wondering, do I need a few more? I do have my uh, Brumby skirt and I don't really have enough things to wear with it. So I think this would be really, really good. And I think I would like to make the stand up ruffle collar. I really like the look of that. So I'm on the look for maybe um, a nice linen fabric or maybe a cotton dobby, maybe a cotton shirting um, to make this up. I think it'd be really, really pretty. So they are my plans. So a couple of plans there, some I'd love your advice on. Uh, so I'll be fabric shopping, uh, maybe online in person over the next few weeks to see what I can do for that. So you know how I fall down crochet rabbit holes. Well, the latest one I've fallen down is pumpkin shaped. And here is my little crochet pumpkin and these are the cutest things and they take no time to do and I think they are utterly adorable. So it's a Bella Coco crochet pattern, it's a free pattern, I'll link it below. So I've been making them in this kind of size, I've been making them as I drop it in slightly a bigger size and I've also been making teeny weeny mini pumpkins and I just love making them. I think I've now made 20 of them. So it's a really quick pattern. It's so nice. You basically sew a little rectangle like this in this um, really cool kind of rib effect and then you sew them together and then squash them all together to make the little pumpkin shape and then you top them with the little eye cord which is really fun to make and there's a little stalk. So I've been making these all the time every evening on the couch doing my little crochet pumpkins and I just adore them and what I'd like to do is make loads and loads and loads and make a little um, indoor wreath for autumn I think be really cute these little really sweet pumpkins I think they are adorable and if you're new to crochet it's a very very straightforward pattern it's the same stitch all the time but I think it's really really effective so that's my little autumn crochet plans and I'll keep you updated on my wreath as well. So they are my autumn plans. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I would love your feedback on some of them. As always, uh, leave a comment for me in the box below. You know how much I love having the chats. What are your autumn plans? What do you think you're doing? Have you made any of these patterns? I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I would love it if you would consider subscribing. That way you'll be notified of when I put up a video and you'll also have access to my community tab. 
So thank you so, so, so much. I hope you all have a lovely week, a lovely weekend, whatever you're up to. I hope you get time for some lovely sewing and I will talk to you all again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.